Welcome back, and today we're going to take a look at Adobe Camera Raw 12.3, and Adobe decided to change the look of the program. So, for those of you who are a little bit confused with the new version of the program, I'm going to cover what everything means, and for those of you who have never touched the program, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this, and I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Camera Raw. So this is the new Adobe Camera Raw, and it really actually isn't that much different. It looks different, but it's really not that much different. There are some new additions that I think are helpful, and there are some new additions, and they're there, and I don't really think they're going to be helpful. But let's take a look at the program. So I've loaded in two images into Adobe Camera Raw. As we can see right down here, we have this image, and we have this image. And these thumbnails are laid out horizontally. We can change this to make this thumbnail horizontal or vertical. And I'll show you here in a second how to change that. We have our main viewing window. We're going to click this button right up here. And this is going to change this to full screen. And that's just going to cover the whole screen and eliminate all that extraneous information that we don't actually need. Down here, we have our new toolbar, which used to be up here at the top. It's now over here on the right. And truthfully, this is all just about the same. So what we're going to do first is come in here and take a look at the preferences. Whenever you open up a program, it is a good rule of thumb to kind of come in here and change some stuff and take a look at what's going on. Now, the first thing that we have here is what's called edit panels and the behavior. And what it's talking about is this section over here. Now, multi means that Whenever I open up a panel and the panels will come by default like this. So they're going to all be closed. And if you click on an arrow, it opens up that panel. Cl click on it again, it will close it. Open it, close it. Under multi, you'll notice I can open up as many of these as I want. Now this one's open and this one's still open. But if I come up here, change this and we'll go to single. Now it's only going to allow one of these to be open. So notice curves is open, but when I click on basic, basic is open. Now curves is closed. So it's only going to open one at a time. This is just a personal preference of how you like to work. A little bit cleaner version here. Responsive is kind of in between the two. And what that means is go to responsive and I click on curves. There's not enough room to open curves and basic at the same time. So it's only going to open up curves. But if we come down here to split toning and color mixer, it has enough room to open up in this window to open up two of them. In this case, it's going to allow us to have two open. If I open up curves, it's going to go ahead and open up curves. But in this case, it's going to close the other two panels because there's not enough room to open those up. And we'll go back in here. We can come up here. So we have some zoom pan functions and this kind of is just control of the program, how it opens. So do you want to do the Lightroom style? Some keyboard shortcuts. Do you want to use the legacy undo, which is kind of the command Z, command option Z. We're going to come in here. Now I don't use DNG handling or I don't use DNG at all, but if you'd want to change that, it's right here. So we have some performance. I just have mine at default at this moment. So raw defaults, I have mine set up to Adobe. Now what this is saying is this little profile over here where it says Adobe color, that's the Adobe ones. And if I was to change that to camera settings, your camera settings have a preset for raws and it could change it to whatever your camera has set. And in that case, Adobe would be not be the main one that shows up. It would be your camera settings. I actually prefer the Adobe one. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those up. And then we have workflow. And this is this little line down here. And I'll just hit cancel. If you ever need to get to it, you can just click on that. It's going to bring it up. I work in the color space of Adobe RGB, also known as Adobe 1998. And if you don't know what color spaces are, they are actually very important to photography. And you should watch a video so you can understand what color spaces are before you start doing any work in photography or any Adobe application. 
because you're going to screw up your color mapping if you don't have those set right. I'm going to be working in 16 bit and I make sure my resolution is at 300. I do not sharpen and I do not open as a smart object. And we'll just go ahead and hit OK. And those are the preferences inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Before we get into the main edit panel that we see over here, we're just going to kind of come in here and I'll go over and tell you what these are and then I'll go over them later. So this is the edit panel, which we see right here. This is our crop tool. This is clone and spot removal. This is our adjustment brush. This is a graduated filter, radial filter, red eye reduction. Snapshots are sort of a form of history and let you go back in time. Then we have some presets and then we have this little button which just brings in some other image settings. So you can reset to open, reset to default, previous conversion, export settings to XMP, load settings, save settings, and set raw defaults as well. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is these, their little thumbnails here, and I have these open with everything ticked. The first thing that we have up here, and I'll go ahead and click on it, it gives you some settings, and this is gonna allow you to use the select all in sync settings and merge to HDR Pro. So just some new options. So this is new, this merge to HDR Pro, merge to panorama, merge to HDR panorama, enhance details and film strip orientation, which is this thing right down here, show file name and show color labels. And those are both selected right now. The next thing that we have down here is just a share button. So you're gonna click on this and it's gonna allow you to save or share right from Adobe Camera Raw. Click on this right here. This is going to allow you to sync settings. So if you make some adjustments to this first image, it will allow you to sync those settings to this image. And right here is the file name. And this is showing you what it's actually this, which is tagging. Now this is sort of strange to have, if you ask me, inside of Adobe Camera Raw, because normally we would be do this in calling and this would automatically show up but I guess there must be some reason that they wanted to have this. I don't think I would ever call because it wouldn't be logical. I don't even know if you could really run Adobe Camera Raw with like hundreds of images in it or would it crash? I have no idea. For whatever reason, they've added these little stars, maybe just so you can see what you've done in culling. I have no idea, but it's there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we have this little button right here. This opens and closes that. So if I click on it, that closes. If I click on it again, it appears. If I right click or control click, it brings up what you can do. So we can switch this to vertical or I can come back down here and right click and switch it back to horizontal. I can right click, I can eliminate the file name and I can right click and eliminate the show rating. So if I don't wanna see the ratings, I can eliminate them. And now I just have my thumbnails. And if I want to hide the thumbnails, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. We can just hide the thumbnails. Now over here is going to show you before and after views. But since we haven't made any adjustments to the images yet, there's really no reason to click on that and show it to you at this time. What we'll do is we'll come up here to this very, very top. We also have another share button up here so we can click on this and share from that location as well. Now this first thing up here is called your histogram. And this is showing you where the data is in your image. It's always gonna be different because all your images are gonna be different. And it doesn't really matter where your data is. It kind of depends on your exposure and what you photograph. So if you ever hear, hear people say, oh, all your data shouldn't be on the right or the left because you messed up your exposure. That's not true. You could have a lot of black or a lot of white in your image. You have these little buttons right here and you can click on them and they're highlight alerts. And basically what they do, if you click on this and you either clip your shadows or over here, clip highlights. And we'll see if I can clip one of them real quick. So I add a whole bunch of contrast and we'll make it real dark. So you see that blue color up? That's telling you that I've made my black area just way too dark. Then we'll come over here and I'm doing the opposite and now we have this red and it's saying, wow, your red is just way too bright. Well, that's because I went crazy on my exposure and messed around with it. So that's what those clipping adjustments stand for. And if you don't wanna see them, you can just click on them so they're not highlighted and turn them off. 
The next section that we have here is under the edit menu. And that is the basic menu. The first thing that we have in the basic menu is actually going to be up here on the very top, which is an auto balance. And this will automatically adjust these values for you. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And you can see this is a pretty good exposure. It really didn't change too much like visually, but you see some adjustments here. I'm not a big fan of auto. I think it usually makes your image too contrasty or ruins it. So I tend to do this manually. Hey, but when you're learning and if auto works for you, auto works for you. The other section that we have, and I'm just going to hit command Z to undo that. And I'm going to click on black and white and we click on this. And obviously we have the availability to adjust this as a black and white image. I'm not going to be doing that for this image. So we're just going to hit command Z once again and get out of that. Now the next thing that we have are those profiles or the presets that I told you about before. And I'm using the Adobe one. So if we click on that, we have Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Portrait, Standard, Vivid, and Monochrome. And these are just basic presets of how your image is gonna look. So we have Landscape and it's gonna increase the color and contrast. Portrait is gonna flatten out your color and flatten out your contrast. Standard is gonna be very similar to Portrait and Vivid's gonna really make everything contrasty and bright. It doesn't matter which one you use. It's really a personal opinion. Those are your options. If you wanted to browse or select some other ones, you could do that. You could also come over here to this preset and this is gonna have a whole lot more. So we have our favorites. We have the Adobe Camera Raw ones, which we just looked at. We have the camera ones, which are in your camera. And as you hover over these, you're gonna see them change because they're gonna apply that profile. Let's go ahead and close that. We have some artistic ones, some modern ones. We'll even try these vintage ones. So we have some vintage presets. These are camera profiles, but they're going to be very similar and doing sort of the same thing as a preset. In this case, we're not going to be using any of those. We're just going to go back and we're going to stick with Adobe Color. Dropping on down here to white balance. I actually do not white balance in my camera. Because I shoot raw, I do all my white balancing in Adobe Camera Raw. The reason for that is, is it's just a whole lot more accurate and I don't have to waste the time in camera doing it. Now we can do as shot, auto, daylight, cloudy, shady, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, and custom. These are all selections that you're gonna have on your camera most likely. And to change one of them, you would just go there. So we'll go to tungsten because this will change the look of it because that's the wrong color balance. And we'll go back up to as shot. And you can change this at any time. Just because you change something doesn't mean that it is going to save it. A raw photo can't overwrite itself. It saves all these adjustments as something called a .xmp. And I have a video on what a .xmp is and how that works. But basically it's a completely other document. And as I slide this, it records that on the document. Adobe Camera Raw reads that document and applies it. And what you see is a preview of what it will look like. It's not actually physically changing the file structure. It's just showing you what it will look like with that adjustment. The next thing that we have here is a temperature slider. So after you adjust or pick something that you want to do, we can come in here and we can warm up our image or cool down our image. So this is going to be going towards yellow. This is to blue. Down here, we can adjust our tint so we can make it more magenta and more green. Now, one thing I will tell you is that when you're making an adjustment and you have a skin tone, don't make it magenta. You don't want magenta skin tones. And even if your image does have magenta skin tones, adjust it so that they go away. They're impossible to fix inside of Photoshop. So make sure that you don't have magenta skin tones. Down here, and if you don't know what this stuff means, I'll have another video where, you know, I kind of am going through this and actually telling you what to do and why. But here we have our exposure, so we can adjust our exposure. Here we can adjust our contrast, so we can give it more contrast or less contrast. I tend to like to have my images be a little bit flat, so we can adjust our highlights, our shadows, our whites, and our blacks. Now, to slide this, you can come in here and slide these sliders. You can come in here and enter a value, so I'll enter zero. 
or you can go out here and use what's called a scrubber. You can see how that changes to a hand with kind of like little arrow pointing to the left and to the right. If you click hold and then you slide, it, the little adjustment bar will slide with you. This is called a scrubbing brush. And just about any numerical value inside of Photoshop or an Adobe product works. The scrubber works on that. It's something that you'll get used to using. I use it all the time. We can adjust our texture, our clarity, the dehaze, vibrance, sand, saturation. Now, these are all what's called global adjustments, meaning that everything that we do here is going to affect whole image, just not a specific area. If you want to adjust just a specific area, you're going to end up using this adjustment brush. But in this case, the basic panel adjusts everything. The next thing that we have down here is the curve. And this is some new stuff. So if you just watched my video on what's new, this is going to be new inside of the program. So here we have this set up as this kind of parametric curve. And I actually hate the way this works. It drives me nuts. It's, I'm not a fan of it. But you can come in here and change this to edit this as a point curve. I'm going to click on this next one. And now it works as a point curve, just like it does in Photoshop. So every time you click, it adds a new point. And what I'm going to do is just delete these points real quick. So here's how this works. This is increasing your highlights. This is flattening out your highlights. This is your midtone area. So this is making your midtones brighter, making your midtones darker. And down here is your shadow. So this is adding more contrast to your image and flattening out your image. So you saw me going here. You can kind of throw these points away. So I'm just going to really quickly go drag my mouse this way and let go. And it will throw that point. So I'm going to go, whoo, and you can see that little point goes away. Cool little trick. So that is the point curve. And you can use the point curve in all channels, which is this. So now you can adjust the red channel only, the green channel, or the blue channel. And down here, we have this little point curve thing. And it has kind of the linear curve, medium contrast. And these are just some like generic settings that they have in here, strong contrast. And we'll just go back to linear. I don't actually use these. I just manually adjust them. But there, if you would like to use them. And so that is how you adjust the curve. And if you want to reset the curve, I'm going to hold the alt option key and notice it says reset curve and I can just click that and reset it. And you could do the same thing here. I can hold the alt option, click that it resets it back to default. So that's the alt option key that is all on PC option on a Mac. All right, let's close this. Next thing that we have is a detail. So inside of detail, we can sharpen your image. So eventually you're going to need to sharpen an image. Almost every image needs to be sharpened. This is your sharpening slider. Now, one trick when you are sharpening your image, notice over here, we see it. This image right now is at 25.8%. And they're even saying this on here now. Thank you, Adobe. Wonderful idea to add that. Basically, we want our image to be at 100%. So it's going to zoom in. I'm going to hold my space bar and you notice I get that little hand, that little move symbol is located right over here. But if you just hold your space bar, it gives it to you and we're just going to zoom in. So we're going to look at this dog's head now. And at 100% is where you want to sharpen. You can't really see what's going on if you're above that or below that. So now I can sharpen my image and as I sharpen my image, I'm going to see exactly how it's affecting my image. Obviously, that's going to be way too much sharpening. So I'm just going to move my thing down here to like maybe 46. Take that. That's still a little bit too much for me. And we're going to lower that down there. We also have noise reduction. So we can slide this to remove noise in our image. And down here, we have some color noise reduction as well. All right. And one thing I'd like to mention inside of this detail tab or any of these tabs if you come on here to the right, notice we have these little arrows or triangles. It's going to give you further options instead of just the kind of the main sharpening. So you can adjust the radius, the detail, and the masking inside of that. 
So I know some people have had some trouble finding some things that used to be in it. They're hidden under these little arrows. So if you click this, you can find other stuff layered inside or nested inside this adjustment. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that out. Next thing that we have is our color mixel panel. And I have mine set up to the new way, so we're gonna go back to HSL. So most people are gonna be used to this method. And this is a way to adjust the color in your image, and this is a global adjustment. Hue stands for the color. So if I go to the red and I slide this, anything that's red, I can adjust. Let's go down here to green, because I know we've got green in this image, because we have grass. So if I slide this, I'm changing the color of green. So I'm changing the color of the color. The next thing is the saturation of the color. So now I can desaturate the green. Now we still see some color in there because there's yellow in the green as well as green. Luminance is the brightness. So I can make the green brighter or darker. So that's what that does. And so you have the hue, the saturation, and the luminance, or you can click on this and get all of them up at one time. So you got the hue here, the saturation, and the luminance. Not a big fan of that, I've always hated it. And Adobe changed it, so we're gonna go here and go down to color. Now this is exactly the same thing, it's just set up differently. Right now we are in red. So I wanna come over here and I'm gonna click on green. So now we're in green, but now I have the hue, the saturation, and the luminance all right next to each other. And this is just so much more wonderful. Uh, if I wanna go into cyan or blue or change any of that, all right here so I can just adjust these sliders from there. So instead of having HSL and having the hue here and then having to scroll down to that and then scroll down to get to the greens, so the greens here, here, and then up here, go to color and they're all right there. And if you wanna change the color, you just click on it and all the hue, the saturation, and the luminance, just right there, wonderful. Split toning. So split toning is the idea that you take your image and you add one color to the highlight areas and one color to the shadow areas. So I'm gonna zoom out of this image, which I'm using Command minus to get out. And we're gonna come in here, going to hold Alt the alt and as I slide this it's showing me the color that I'm going to get from the split toning. Now for highlights which is right up here we're going to go for like an orangish color, orangish yellow. We're going to go right there. The saturation is how much of it we're getting. So if I raise the saturation we're going to see we're going to make it about 50 percent and then for the shadows we're going to raise that up to about 50 percent and now we're gonna change this color and we're gonna go for like a blue, darker blue, and that looks pretty good. Split toning, it's giving this yellowish color here to the highlights area, this bluish color to this thing. You see a lot of, in like Instagram and cell phone pictures where you're getting these funky cool effects. That's how you adjust split toning. Now we're gonna get out of this, so I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key, I'm gonna click Reset, and we're gonna get out of split toning. Optics. Optics is lens correction, really. What this is doing is just calibrating your image. So if I click on this, it's it's distortion that you get a lot of times when you're shooting with wide angle lenses and stuff like that. We also have a defringe down here so we can defringe the outer edges of the image where you kind of get some funky colors and things going on. We can use profiles on these little buttons to remove stuff. So the first one is remove chromatic aberration. The second is gonna be use profile corrections. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna read my camera, Canon, what lens I shot with, and then it's automatically gonna fix that. So I can go here and I can click on auto, and it's gonna automatically correct for the image. You're not gonna really see any change in this, but if you shot with a wide angle lens of a landscape or a building, you're definitely gonna see lens correction, and I have videos on how to do this, but that's what the optic stands for. We have geometry down here. This is sort of the same thing. So geometry is going to allow you to kind of warp an image. So I'll just go ahead and kind of do it here. So you can see we're stretching this out. This would be done or used a lot of times for basically architectural photography, 
where you want to fix items like where it might kind of bow. So let me come down here. It kind of arcs like this because of the wide angle and it should be straight. You can fix this stuff. So any of these adjustments that you would want to make in the geometry, optics is going to fix some of it. This is going to allow you to distort it or change it even more. Go ahead and reset that. Close that out. Effects. So we can add grain to our image, so noise to our image, or we can vignette. So if you go to the left, it's gonna make a dark vignette. And if you go to the right, it's gonna make a bright white vignette. If you want more options on either one of these, you just click on these little arrows and you can control how the vignette works. So I can come in here and add this vignette, can feather this out more so it's a softer vignette. I can control where this starts and where it ends so I can control how vignette that I have. Once again, reset, close that out. Calibration is something that I never really use, but basically we're in here, we're gonna be able to change the colors of our image a little bit different way. So we can go into the shadows and change those. We can change the reds, the greens, and the blue colors. This is definitely something that you just kind of play around with and get used to. Truthfully, I never use it. So those are your global adjustments inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Well, that's it for today's video. The next video will come over here and take a look at this stuff here and everything else that you can do inside of Adobe Camera Raw. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.